this is John Immervar. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important artists at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Vincent van Gogh. Here he is in some self-portraits. He blazed through the world of art like a meteor. He started painting when he was 28 years old and did almost 900 paintings before he died, mysteriously, at age 37. He's enormously popular today. These days you can buy sunflower socks, or you can even get a Van Gogh Stormtrooper t-shirt. Let's take a look at the museum's four Van Gogh pictures. Van Gogh was a boldly revolutionary painter, wildly original, but later I'm going to show that he is sometimes also deeply rooted in tradition. Let's start with Sunflowers, one of his most famous paintings. It is radical in so many ways. On the one hand, it doesn't have the usual tricks to give a painting the feeling of depth. Look at that pot. You can't put your hand behind it. And yet, the paint is laid on so thickly in the flowers that the painting is almost sculptural and three-dimensional. He isn't trying to paint a realistic picture of sunflowers. For example, look at this flower. It's like a red eye staring at us, but there's no red in sunflowers. So if he isn't trying to represent sunflowers, what's he trying to do? This painting was one of a series of related sunflower paintings that were originally intended to celebrate the creation of a fellowship of like-minded artists. There are four other versions, but Philadelphia Museum has the only one that's permanently in the U.S. Van Gogh hoped his friend Gauguin, and here's Gauguin in a self-portrait, would be the leader of this fellowship, and that the other artists would follow Gauguin the way sunflowers follow the sun. Van Gogh was enormously excited about this future, and to me, this picture is an expression of the energy and excitement that he anticipated, with the flowers almost bursting out of the frame. But the dream didn't work out as he hoped. And not long after that, he committed himself to this asylum for a mental illness. While there, he did several paintings inspired by the view from the window of his room. We know which room he was in, so we can see the view. Here's how Pissarro, a contemporary of Van Gogh, painted a similar view. Pissarro's goal was to express what he actually saw. But Van Gogh was often more interested in how he felt than in what he saw. So when Van Gogh saw the view from his window, he painted this. Has any artist better captured the feeling of looking out of a window on a rainy day? But while Van Gogh uses the view, he isn't bound by it. Instead of straight, rational walls, his walls are wavy. The trees in the background have become a range of hills or mountains. You might know another very famous painting inspired by this same view, Van Gogh's Starry Night. Look at the hills in the background. They look a lot like the hills in rain. But while these hills are very similar to each other, they aren't much like the view from Van Gogh's window, because of, again, Van Gogh is painting not what he saw, but what he felt. Van Gogh is also obsessed by color, as we can see in the museum's painting of Madame Roulin and her baby. With a few strokes, he has captured the outline of the woman's face. But rather than using colors to capture the way faces actually look, he uses faces to explore color relationships. For example, no one's face is red like this, but his eye seems to be on the relationship between the red in the face and the red in the chair. And how about the baby with green hair and almost a green mask? That green connects the baby to the green in the mother's dress. Here's one of their sons. His face blends yellow and green, matching the background, and his shirt. His red lips relate to the red button on the shirt. But what is most important is the contrasting blue of the hat. Again, Van Gogh is not trying to represent the real colors in these faces, but using these portraits to explore colors. There's also an emotional content here. Who are these people? They're the family of the postman in the town where Van Gogh was living. You can see the postman himself over at the Barnes Foundation. This family was very kind to Van Gogh who was often a difficult person to be around, and he painted or sketched 25 images of them. They were also an island of peace and tranquility in his chaotic world. So I think Van Gogh was interested in a lot more than color relationships. 
But here he expresses that emotional connection, not by radical painting techniques, but by going back to his Dutch roots, as in this image of Mary and baby Jesus, done by a Dutch master from the 1500s. Don't both paintings express that sense of peace and stability that was so important to Van Gogh? In fact, in a letter, Van Gogh did a sketch of Madame Roulin in what looks like a little altarpiece, where she is, like the Virgin Mary, flanked by pictures of sunflowers. So Van Gogh has painted a traditional and deeply spiritual painting in a very new and original way. Now, let's go back to sunflowers. Yes, it's a radical painting, but it too recalls an earlier Dutch tradition of the still life with flowers, such as this beautiful floral still life painted by another Dutch painter in the 1600s. Notice that in the middle of all these lovely flowers, there's a caterpillar about to eat the flowers. It's a Dutch idea. In the middle of life, the painters want to remind us of death. Memento mori. Remember that you will die. And so, of course, there's a dead flower off to the side. Now let's jump back to Van Gogh and take another look at sunflowers. And perhaps we can see these sunflowers, each one so different, as representing the stages of life, culminating in this one dead flower, memento mori. As excited as Van Gogh was about his art fellowship, perhaps he also wanted to remind himself that it might not work out, as it did not. Now, let's go back to rain. There's another tradition at work here, but this time it isn't a Dutch tradition, but another tradition that was important to Van Gogh from Japan. Japanese art was almost unknown to Europe until 1853, when Commodore Perry sailed his black ships into the Tokyo Harbor and opened up trade, as we see in this Japanese print. European artists became fascinated with these prints. Here's Van Gogh's portrait of himself after he mutilated his ear. Notice right next to him, we see a Japanese print. He had a large collection of these prints, and especially loved this one called Bridge in the Rain by Hiroshige. He was so fascinated that he made a copy of it, which we can see on the right. Now, look at the relationship between Van Gogh's copy of the Hiroshige painting and the Philadelphia painting. Strong diagonals are very typical in Japanese prints, and here we have a strong diagonal of the rain, a different diagonal from the bridge or the ditch, and finally, a third diagonal from the furrows in the field and the slanting line of the shore. Why did he love Japanese art? He wrote to his brother that it made him feel happier and brought him out of conventional life back to nature. Just look for a moment at some of the other copies that Van Gogh made of Japanese art, and you can feel the tranquility that they brought to him. <laughs> 